In a fast-paced society that is continuously searching for truth, the Bible has the answers that will bring true joy and lasting satisfaction. We invite you to join us for Truth For Today with Dr. Neil Jackson. Dr. Jackson's verse-by-verse preaching will answer your deepest questions from God's Holy Word. How committed are you to Scripture? How committed are you to dialoguing about Jesus every day of your life? So open your Bible and your heart to hear Truth For Today. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Truth For Today. There are certain principles and laws that guide our universe. Principle of gravity, a lot of laws that God set up that are just govern everything about our daily life. And there's also some principles of success that if we will live by these principles, our lives, our marriages, our businesses will take off to a whole new level. My most recent book, The Upside Down Way to Success, chronicles from God's Word His principles for true lasting success. You can receive the book, The Upside Down Way to Success, with your generous donation when you write or call Truth For Today. Mother walked into the kitchen And her little boy was drawing a picture. And she asked, what are you drawing a picture of? He says, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the mom says, well, no one has seen God. How are you drawing a picture of God when nobody's seen it? Little boy says, well, when I'm done, everybody will know what God looks like because I'm getting ready to draw it. Well, when we come to Luke chapter 14... And a lot of times we as pastors, we want to say, well, you need to be a great dad. You need to be a great dad. You need to be a dad that your kids can look up to. You need to be an honorable, decent, moral, ethical father. You say, well, how do I do that? And what does that look like? Well, when you come to Luke chapter 14, it tells you what that looks like. And it tells you how you do it. Luke chapter 14, verse 25 says, There were great multitudes with him. So verse 25 is crucial for interpreting this whole passage. So the masses were following Jesus. Jesus is very unlike most pastors today. He wasn't as consumed and concerned in decisions as he was in disciples. So he was glad that the multitudes were there, but he was not content with the multitudes. He wanted them to take another step and to become disciples. And so Jesus, three times in this passage, says, unless you do this, unless you do this, unless you do this, you cannot, it's impossible to be my disciple. And I'm here to say, for you to be a great father, for you to be a great mother, for you to be a great Christian. It is impossible unless you are a disciple of Jesus. So this morning, three descriptions of a man of God or three descriptions of a woman of God. Sermon I'm entitling, The Biography of a Great Dad. What this great father looks like. First truth is this. A great dad is a disciple of Christ. Chapter 14, verse 26, Jesus says, If any man come after me, and he gives you this long description, Hate not his father, his mother, his wife, his children, brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also. Notice that last phrase. He cannot be my disciple. So the word disciple comes from the Latin word which means to turn or to follow hard after. It spoke of someone who was living his life in one direction and turned to live a different direction, and to follow a different leader. So discipleship, it's important that we understand this, it's not something that I do after I'm saved. To be a Christian literally is to be a disciple. You look throughout the New Testament, very few times are Christians called Christians in the New Testament. Usually they're called disciples or followers of Christ. Too many Christians are like this crowd. They're they're there for Jesus, for a religious duty, 
to see some kind of miracle or to hear some good talk. But they're not there to be a disciple. So let me just go on record and get in your business. To be a great father is impossible unless you are a disciple of Jesus. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus was not just looking for decisions. Jesus was not just looking for masses. Jesus was looking for people that says, I'm going to follow the Lord with all of my heart. I am totally consumed, I'm totally committed, I'm totally in to being a disciple, a learner, a follower of Jesus. Some of you are saying, well, I don't understand what you're talking about. And I would say, you do. Let me illustrate. Football season, college football season is not that far away. Now, my wife is somewhere here dressed kind of prim and proper and prissy. Well, that ends as soon as August 31st gets here because it's college football season. And so my wife, her wardrobe changes. I mean, her demeanor changes. She, 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 thank God, she turns off the Hallmark Channel and she turns on ESPN. And I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about my wife. I mean, she goes nuts. I mean, if you come to our house today, over in the corner, it's this huge University of Georgia flag. It's not there for me. It's there because when Georgia does something good, Tracy gets that and Pris, Pris, proper everything. She gets that flag and she's jumping up and down. She's right up because she's a follower of the Georgia Bulldogs. She's proud of it. She's not ashamed of it. And she says, hey, I am totally in to what they're doing. That's what a disciple is. Where you say, I'm a follower of Jesus. I'm all into following after Jesus. It's not just something I do uh, once a week. That is my life. I don't care if people say, oh, they're fanatical, or that person's a little bit off. No, no, no. I am a follower of Jesus, and I'm all into it. We were on the plane this week, flying, and they made that little speech that they always make. If the, and they don't say it like this. This is the Neil Jackson cliff note version. If the plane's going down, or if we lose oxygen, and these things drop down from the ceiling, put yours on first, strap it behind your head, then give it to your kid. Now my thought is, he's little, I'm big. I'd rather him live than me. Give it to the kid first, then give it to me. They say, no, 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 no. If you don't take care of you, you're not fit to take care of him. So therefore, when those oxygen masks fall from the ceiling, strap yours on first and then strap it on to your children. And I'm here to say, Daddy, you cannot ever, 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 ever be a godly father that your child needs unless you are a disciple of Jesus Period. You may be very generous. You might, may buy them the, the greatest car or the nicest wardrobe. You cannot be a great father unless you are great spiritually and you're a disciple of Jesus. Period. Number one, a great dad is a disciple of Christ. Number two, a great dad is devoted to Christ. Now look what verse 26 says. If any man come after me, or if anybody's following me, or if anybody's religious, says they're my father, and hate not his father, and his mother, and his wife, and his children, and his brethren, and sisters, yea, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. So when I look at this, Father, I'm supposed to hate. Mother, I'm supposed to hate. Wife, I'm supposed to hate. Children, I'm supposed to hate. Brethren, I can hate my brother. No, no problem on that. I can do that. But I don't know about hating all those other ones. Listen to me. Jesus was not telling you to hate your family. Jesus said you're to love your enemies. So if he tells us that we're to love our enemies, he's not going to say, oh, but hate your mom, hate your dad, hate your wife, hate your children, hate your brothers, hate your sisters. That's not what he's saying. 2,000 years ago, if you were to become a follower of Christ, more than likely you would be disowned by your parents. 
They would kick you out. They would give you no more of their, their, their finances. And you would no longer be in their will. You would get no inheritance. So he's saying is, your love for me must be greater than your love for anybody else on the face of the earth. That's what he's saying. Let me illustrate it like this. Let's say that Randy Brady here on the front row is riding his bike tomorrow around Bennett. So he's riding, he has this souped up fancy 10 speed and he's riding his little bike all over, all over Bennett. And all of a sudden comes this souped up Chevy Corvette and just fly, I would say Ford Mustang, but it would be broke down, so I don't say Ford Mustang. I just lost half of you there. Chevy Corvette zooms by him going 100 miles an hour. Now, he on his little bicycle, his fancy 10 speed, he is moving. But this Chevy Corvette going 100 miles an hour passes him as if he's standing still. Well, at that very moment, there is a plane up there in the sky going 667 miles an hour. And it looks down at Randy Brady on his little bicycle and at that Chevy Corvette going 100 miles an hour. And it smokes by both of them as if they are standing still. Now, in reality, they're all moving, but he passes them as if they're standing still. That's what Jesus is saying here. Your love for me compared to your love for your wife, compared to your love for your children, compared to your love for your parents is to be as if it's hate compared to your love for me. So my question is, how much do you love Jesus? Or what do you love more in life than you do Jesus? Jesus was not looking for army reservists that would show up occasionally, do their duty and do a little exercise. No, 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 no. He was looking for someone that was sold out, was committed, that he was number one in every area of our lives. So what do you love more than Jesus? And I'm here to say, what makes a great father is when Jesus is number one. Number three, a great dad is demonstrative of Christ. Now look at verse 27. And whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. So when Jesus speaks of bearing a cross, remember what a cross represented 2,000 years ago. The cross was not some implementation of inconvenience or some implement of irritation. The cross was torture. The cross was abuse. The cross was death. So Jesus says, if you want to be a great father, if you want to be a great mother, if you want to be a great Christian, here's what you got to do. You got to be a disciple. You got to be devoted. But he tells you how to do it. You have to die to your flesh. Look at verse 29. Whosoever does not bear his cross. Cross, that means submission. That means you give up your way. That means you give up your preferences. That means you give up your agenda. Uh, your agenda. Those sentenced to be crucified had to submit to the sentence. Now think about it. If you want to hang yourself, you can do it yourself. If you want to shoot yourself, you can do it yourself. If you want to drown yourself, you can do it yourself. If you want to poison yourself, you can do it yourself. If you want to stab yourself, you can do it yourself. But to be crucified, you have to submit and let somebody else do it to you. Jesus says, if you want to be my disciple, if you want to be a great father, a great mother, you have to die to you. Cross means submission. The cross means, sir, it's not your way, it's his way. Now some of us, we like our way, and we like our seat, and we like our remote control, and don't do it a way that we don't like, or we'll give you an earful. Jesus says, if you want to be a great father, you don't get your way. You submit 
and let me get my way. Cross means submission. Cross means shame. Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. So the cross brought shame. It brought reproach. It brought mocking. So you say, well, if I live that kind of way, what are people going to think about me? What are they going to say about me? They're going to think I've gone soft. Who cares what they say? Dad, I promise you, if you will start living your way, your life this way, your parenting will excel a thousand percent because you're demonstrating Jesus. Jesus suffered for you. Jesus bore reproach so that you don't have to bear reproach. We've sang about his, his love today. Well, the way we know his love is because of what he went through for us. But it would have never happened unless he submitted himself to the Father's will and if he was not willing to be scorned and ridiculed and despised. The cross means, Dad, here it is, sacrifice. Not just, okay, those kids are so expensive. How much is this going to cost me? Hey, it's going to cost you everything. You sacrifice your life for your children. That is what a great father, that's what a disciple looks like. Now, in our day, few are willing to sacrifice. Sacrifice my time? Sorry, I don't have time to do that Bible school. I'm too busy. Sacrifice my money? No, 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 no. Don't ask me to give 11%. I'm struggling with 10%. Sacrifice. Jesus just didn't give 10% for your redemption. He gave everything for your redemption. The reason we love him, the reason we get fired up about Jesus is because of the cross. And if you want to be a great father, the cross means submission. The cross means sacrifice. The cross means that you will be shamed. Look, look at verse 27. Whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me, cannot be my disciple. Notice the, the order of that. Bearing the cross, that is you dying. That is you submitting, you saying, okay, 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 okay. Neil Jackson, the old Neil Jackson is dead to my wishes and my wants and my desires and my feelings. I'm giving them up. And secondly, I'm coming after Jesus. That's the secret to parenting. Okay, I don't feel good, but I'm dying to how I feel, and I'm going to go meet the needs of my kids. Full disclosure, I don't know if you ever read your stories to your kids. My kids are here somewhere today. They're going to be tragically depressed here in a second. They would bring me these books. Most of the time they took them to Tracy. They would bring me these books say, Daddy! Will you read me this story when we go to bed? So I'd be reading them a story about Goldilocks and some kind of bears or something. About the hot bears and the medium bears and the cold bears. And You know, when their eyes started blinking, you know what I started doing? I started flipping two pages at one time. <laughs> don't look at me like you don't know what I'm talking about. You did it too. This is saying, you give up, you submit. Bear my cross, and then I'm going to follow Jesus. I don't want to read this book. I know what this book says. I'm tired of this book, but, 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 but I'm dying to what I want. Jesus, what do you want me to do? This is the greatest marriage principle ever. The reason people fight is because they won't submit. They won't give up their will. So Jesus, I die. Oh yeah, he may walk on me. She may take advantage of me, but I die. And then I'm going to do what you want me to do. That is following Jesus. That is the secret for marriage. That is the secret for pairing. That is the secret for being a good employee. You die to you. And then you say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? How do you want me? Listen, listen. The snarty remarks will be gone when you're dead. You know what? I buried a lot of people. They never talk back to me. They never, they never say, that was a horrible joke, preacher. 
They never say, you're going too long, preacher. They're dead and they don't talk. Chew in your life. Chew in your marriage. Chew in your parenting. We don't like that cross. We don't want to die. It's not fun. It's not joyous. It's humiliating. We don't like the cross. James, Jesus' brother. James, son of Zebedee, killed by mobs in Jerusalem. I'm here to say before the mobs ever killed them in Jerusalem, they had to die to self. No longer doing it my way. Jesus, you got everything I have. Matthew, run through with a sword, Ethiopia. Philip, hung in Greece. Bartholomew, they cut him to pieces. Long before they cut him to pieces, he had died to the flesh and said, Jesus, whatever you want, I'm all in. I'm your follower. Andrew, crucified in Achaia. Thomas was killed in a, with a spear in India. Thaddeus was shot to death with arrows. Simon the Zealot was crucified by the Persians. Apostle John died on the Isle of Patmos, deserted for his faith. Peter, they came to Peter and says, hey, we're going to crucify you. And he says, no, no, I'm not worthy to be crucified of my Savior. Turn me upside down, crucify me upside down. Long before he was ever crucified to a physical cross, he was crucified on the cross of his flesh. God, I don't want to be an offense to you. I want to be a blessing to you. And although I may be ridiculed, although I may be shamed, I want you to, to, to approve of me in my life and to live through me. Long before they ever died physically, they died to the flesh. Dad, Father's Day sermon today is all about the cross. If you're here and you've never accepted Jesus Christ, you may be a great person, you may be a loving father, you may be a generous father. You'll never be a great father because your key responsibility as a father is to lead your children spiritually. And the most important role that you have, you're AWOL. There's a lot of Christian guys here. Oh, you're great at teaching your kids how to play ball. You're great at providing all of the financial needs and keeping your kids in a great vehicle. But when it comes to spirituality, you're a big zero, pardon me, capital L, loser, because you say, oh, that's the woman's work. No, 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 no. God gave you those children and you to bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. It was your responsibility. You say, I don't know how. Being a disciple of Christ, this book, Sunday school, discipleship groups, whatever it is to help you be a student of this book, being devoted, loving Jesus. Listen, guys, loving Jesus more than you love your job. A lot of us are workaholics. We got to work and work and work and work and make more money and more money and more money. And work is a good thing. Neglecting your kids for work is an awful thing. Your job as a father is to demonstrate Jesus. It happens by you dying to flesh and allowing Christ to live through you. Other than my family, probably the person who influenced me more than anyone else was my basketball coach. Six foot eight, big old giant of a man, kind of ornery. And he decided it was his responsibility to get all of the character flaws out of Neil Jackson's life. So it was a very unusual practice when I wasn't running laps or suicides after practice. Everybody else, we'd already run. But he decided Neil Jackson was going to run more laps and more suicides just for my character and my well-being. Well, we came back. It was, it was several of us. It was, it was our senior year. He says, guys, I'm going to teach you a new defense. You're going to look foolish. Everyone's going to say uh, that we're all off our rockers, but it will work. And we will win ball games. But for it to work, you have to buy into me. You have to buy into my, my coaching. And you have to do it. Even if we fail miserably, you have to do it to the best of your ability. So I don't know, what is this? What, what's he doing here? So he told us, laid it out, walked us through it. 
And we thought we were goofballs. They're going to laugh us out of the gym. Nobody is playing like this. Nobody's doing defense like this. This is, this is absurd. First couple of games we played, it was against some lower level competition. And we're trying to figure out his new found way of defense. And we struggle through these teams, but we won. Got about halfway through the year, and we're doing his crazy, even today. Nobody in the NBA does his type of de defense. Nobody in college very rarely ever does his de type of defense. I've never seen anybody in high school do his type of de defense other than our high school team. Middle of the year playing these big old teams. Guys, we're going to go out there and we're going to play our game. They may laugh at us. They may ridicule us. They may, they may mock us at the beginning of the game. When the game's over, they won't be laughing, they won't be mocking, they won't be ridiculed because we will have such a lead over them. But the key is, I don't care how big they are, I don't care how impressive their dunks are in warm-ups, you just play our defensive game and we'll win. That, that year, we lost two basketball games. He would probably point to me and say, because Neil Jackson wasn't doing the defense the way he was supposed to be doing. That year, we accomplished more than we ever have in any previous year of that institution. But the key is, we did it the coach's way, and the coach was right. Jesus tells you how to be a great father. Be a disciple. Be devoted. Be demonstrating him. That is the right way. You can say, oh, 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 somebody over here is doing it this way. Somebody over here, they're, they're having some success. No, no, no. Jesus is the ultimate. He says, if you want to be a great father, you've got to be a disciple. You've got to love me more than anything else. And you have to demonstrate me. Die to the flesh. Allow me to live through you. If you'll do it my way, you'll win every single time. Dad... Your kids need Jesus. I don't care how old they are. I don't care where they are. They need Jesus. And they'll get them through you following hard after him. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Truth For Today. Our prayer is that God's Word has ministered to your deepest need and answered many of your questions about life. Truth For Today is only able to broadcast on this station through the regular prayers and financial support of God's people. Would you consider becoming a monthly partner of Truth For Today? You may mail your gifts to Truth For Today, Post Office Box 104, Bennett, North Carolina, 27208. If you would like to receive a copy of today's message, please request this sermon with your donation of any amount. If you would like to donate by credit card, you may call 336-581-3170. Be assured that God's Word has the answer for your every need. And join us next time for Truth For Today.